Let's clean cook and eat a soft shell turtle. <laughs> this is a spiny soft shell turtle. A spiny soft shell turtle has the spines on the top of its shell there where its head is. I just want to stress that this video will be graphic and this entire video is mostly just for educational purposes. All right, so let's get right into it. I'm going to use pliers like this. This is my Leatherman Surge. I'll be using this to grab a hold of its mouth, pull its head out. I just have gloves on just in case. And then I have my ax and I'm just going to chop its head off. All right, I've cut off its head and it's bled out already. It may still move a little bit as I'm processing it, but I want to go over a few things about the soft shell turtle. This specific soft shell turtle that I have is called a spiny soft shell turtle, as identified by those small spines that you see at the top of its carapace. If you plan on taking any animals, please follow your state laws and regulations. For Minnesota, you need a recreational license, which I purchased. So when you take a turtle, especially a soft shell turtle like this, the carapace from the top here all the way to the bottom has to be at least 12 inches or bigger for you to keep. And I measured this already. It's 13 and a half inches. And the final thing you're supposed to do is call the DNR. There's a specific number that you're supposed to call to report that you've taken a turtle. I've already done that also. I've had this turtle for about five days now. I kept it in my container here. Uh, I filled it up with water and I've given it food. And so I know that its system is clean and it's been purged. Uh, and turtles, they can live for a very long time without food anyways, and that's fine. But yeah, let's get started. So I have two different knives with me. The first one is a fillet knife. It's very flexible. But I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing when filleting like a turtle. I did use a fillet knife when processing the, the turtle last year that I got. Otherwise, I just recently got a new knife. This is called the Mountaineer by PKS or Pathfinder Knife Shop uh, by uh, Dave Canterbury. And this is like a survival knife. It's a really robust and large knife. This will get the job done. I'm going to stick with the fillet knife for now. See, it's still moving a little bit here and there because of the nerves. So last time I started rough, roughly around here. So what you wanna do is cut in the soft sections like this. If I recall correctly, right below here, there's going to be a bone that's attached to the shell. You may need something more robust, like a larger knife or maybe some shears, but let's uh, start right here. See, the feet are pulling in as a natural sort of reflex. <laughs> it's so weird, but you can poke a hole here and just start cutting around and separating the shell from the skin and meat here. You want the skin to be tight so it's easier to cut. There you go. So I'm cutting below the tail right now and right into the leg here. And it looks like there's tiny parasites or tiny um, leeches that are attached to the skin. I'm not sure if the camera can capture it. Yeah, I think the camera is seeing it. That's kind of gross. So I'm going to make sure I'm cooking the, the meat very well. So I am going to uh, clean this off because I do not want these parasites to be stuck on me. Let's clean them off here too. I'm gonna remove them first. And I'll check for more of these parasites as I go. You don't want those parasites or leeches or whatever they are. They look like worms. So pull the skin tight and then cut. Now just to cut the meat away from the carapace. So right below the shell here, just like this. Oh wow, this one happens to be a female also. Last year, the soft shell turtle that I got was a female also. It had a bunch of eggs. I was not expecting for this one to be a female also. But yeah, look at these eggs. These are perfect. We're going to save these. So I'm looking at my hands carefully to make sure I don't have those weird parasites. Oh, see? 
There's one on my thumb here. See it moving? Oh, there's another one here. This is really gross. I do not like this at all. I'm going to like squeeze them and kill them, hopefully. I do not want these to be burrowing into my skin. Yeah, they're fine and very tiny. They definitely have the capability to burrow into my skin, I feel like. Gotta be careful with that. Yeah, I'm like squeezing them and stuff and they stay alive. They're not dying. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm a little iffy about this, but it should be fine. As long as I cook the meat like all the way through and well done, that should be fine. It wouldn't be a problem. When you get to right about here, there's this bone right here that you can pull up, but it's still, there's another bone right here that's attached to the tail and it's attached to the carapace. And so you can't take it out. Best thing to do is like twist it off or just cut the leg out, but you can probably twist and turn to break it out. <clears throat> Before we continue, I'm going to, I'm going to cut the arms from up here off. There you go. I'm also cutting all the meat away from the carapace right now also from the chest piece here. It's reflexes is pulling the arm in. All right, so I'm gonna cut the carapace right here. There's a bone right here that needs to be like cut through. There you go. There you go. This part here. So I'm taking more of the eggs here. The arms have been removed and they were attached to the carapace. You just kind of pull on it and it just comes off. There you go. All right, so here is the carapace. All the flabby parts like this, this stuff is edible. I've made a soup out of this. This is full of collagen and it's really sticky when it's cooked for a very long time. But it has this very thin layer of skin, same with on this side, that you have to remove. But here's the neck. <laughs> I can take this off. Reminds me of like a chicken neck or a duck neck. All right, so I put gloves on to keep my fingers from getting those like parasites or leeches or whatever they are on my fingers. See, they're all over the place. See, right on my thumb there. They're pretty much just on the skin. Um, and so as long as I'm careful and not get it on the meat, I'm fine. And it's pretty easy to see them anyways. But yeah, I'm going to uh, just keep an eye on them. Make sure that it doesn't contaminate the meat. There you go. Tossing the skin. I'm just checking the meat now. <laughs> All this yellow stuff is fat. I think they might be edible. I'm pretty sure the fat is edible. Um, but I'm not going to eat it. I'm just going to cut it off. The fat might be able to be rendered down also. But yeah, I'm not going to do anything with the fat. I'm just going to keep the meat here. Yeah, the meat looks good. I'm not seeing any of the parasites. Here are the legs and tail. I'm just going to skin it and grab all the meat. All right, here's everything that I got from the turtle. <laughs> this is sort of like the pelvis bone from the back. These are the hind legs. Here are the front legs. I got the neck, the tail, and I got a few eggs. <laughs> and a bunch of like small nuggets of meat from all over. This is sort of like the chest piece. This piece can probably be cooked into a soup, but I'm not going to spend time doing that. I've got the shell here, the carapace, all of the soft parts right here, like at the end here. This can be cut off and then boiled and then turned into a soup. 
it's really gelatinous and it's very good. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be keeping this uh, because I don't have space. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut off all of this and I'm gonna save it. And then the hard stuff, I'm probably just gonna leave it out to dry. But for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off all the chunks of meat and stuff like that that I can from these. I'm gonna chop them up and I'm gonna season it and I'm gonna make this like a uh, grape leaf roll. So we're gonna go collect some grape leaves in a little bit here, okay? But yeah, this is pretty good meat. <laughs> and I have the head. I'm gonna take this, put it in a bag or something and freeze it. I'm not gonna really need it just yet. Uh, I still have the head from the previous turtle that I butchered last year. So I might make like a turtle head soup or something like that. We'll see. <laughs> all right, so for the carapace, I'm going to cut all the soft spots and I'm going to keep it. Everything else, I'm probably just going to boil it and then clean off all the meat and stuff. And then I'm just gonna let it dry out. And I think using scissors will work. Yeah. So I'm just gonna cut it like this. Right here is soft. It's like an arch right here. There you go. <laughs> So this is edible and this can be boiled and cleaned. So I'm going to chop this up a little bit more here. There you go. I'll be able to freeze this. It'll be small enough. And this I'm going to just clean up. So off to the side of the shed, I have a grapevine. And so I'm going to show you right there. It's a big mess right here, but for the most part, I have all of those grape leaves right there growing. So I'm going to pick a bunch of them and we're going to be using it to wrap the turtle meat up and then grill it. All right, there you go. I think I've collected plenty. And if I need more, I'll collect some more later. I've already washed the grape leaves. I'm gonna put this to the side for now. And here's the meat. There's a lot of chunks of meat that I want to put aside and eat on its own. So like this right here, like this was a piece of muscle on the leg. And uh, I just want to, uh, I just want to season this and grill it and eat it on its own. And then there's pieces like this. This was a piece that was inside near the tail. And so this is like a really stringy, almost tenderloin sort of meat or a, or a really soft muscle. And it's very interesting. So I want to try it. Bigger chunks like this are really nice too. This is like the upper leg meat. So I'm gonna use upper leg meat like this and I'm going to mince it. This piece right here was near the pelvis and I'm gonna keep this as a separate piece too. It's really interesting. So here's more upper leg meat that I'm going to use and uh, this here also. So these are going to be individually like seasoned and skewered and I'm going to try these individually. This we're going to ground up. I'm gonna chop some garlic. All right, so we're gonna mix all the garlic with the meat here. Now I'm gonna separate this into two different bowls because I'll be seasoning each differently just to test it out. So for this one, I'm gonna be using Dano's Hot Chipotle. This is low sodium, but it is all natural ingredients. That should be enough. And now just mix it up. All right. There you go, so this is the Danos. And this one right here is going to be the second seasoning I'm gonna use on this one right here. This one is called Deck Project. It's a uh, zesty sweet chili flavored one. This is a local brand that's exclusive to only one store, I think. And so you can't really buy this online. They don't have a website where you can buy it online. So it's only in local stores. This has a lot more salt in it. So I am going to be careful about how much I put in. This, this one also, because it's a sweet chili one, it actually has some sugar in it also. Now, I'm gonna take the leaves here. You want them facing down like this, so you see the veins facing up. And sometimes you can layer them if you'd like. So you have a little bit more of them. So, let's do the Danos first. So just a small chunk like this, and spread it out a little bit, and then you just take it. You just fold it up like this, and then you can fold up the sides from here. And then continue rolling. And there you go. 
and you have a small piece like this. Now, I need to go grab a skewer, but you're going to skewer it. But I'm just gonna leave it face down like this for now. So make sure when you grab your skewers to soak them in water for about 15 minutes or so before you actually use them. That way when you're grilling them, they don't burn. So just skewer it like this. You also don't need to curl up the sides. You can actually just roll it up like this. And so it'll look like this. I usually like doing it like this a little bit more. There you go. So there's the difference between the two. So it's open, this one's folded up off to the side. Now I'm sliding them up closer to the tip here because I want more space to hold it from behind here while I'm grilling it. Same with the other one. So Dano's here and Deck Project here. I have the Winterwell Titanium Fast Fold Wood Stove. I'm gonna be using this as my small grill. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm gonna throw this in. This Mora Companion Spark has a ferrocerium rod at the end here. I'm gonna get the fire going here. Perfect. I have chunks of charcoal that I'm gonna throw in. Like wood charcoal. I'm getting a lot of really good smoke. <laughs> All right, we're gonna cook the Danos one first. I think this is gonna smoke it too. I'm gonna spray some Pam on it because I don't want it to burn. This smells incredible. I'm trying to be careful not to burn the the leaves too much. I just want it to cook the meat. So I might need to let the fire burn down a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna have to bring this down to coals first before I continue cooking. Okay, I think this is done. So I'm going to set it to the side like this. I'm gonna take the second one. This is the Dano's one. I'm gonna place it on top right here just to kind of heat it back up. All right, I grabbed myself a second beer. I'm gonna pour myself some more. So here's the Dano's one. It's nice and hot, I'm gonna place that down. This is the Deck Project one. Place this one down and the coals are still hot. It's probably got a lot more time left. Let's try the Dano's one. Ah, smells good. Oh my God. Holy crap. <laughs> like the garlic that I put in it is just bursting full of flavor. Mm. Holy crap, that's amazing. The grape leaves are tart, they're sour. And so it pairs well with like this meat because it's fatty and it's very savory. Holy crap, this is amazing. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, this is very good. And the meat, very tender. It's a lot softer than you would think. Turtle meat is like a mix between chicken and pork. And it's very tender. It's like a chicken and pork tenderloin. That's what turtle meat is like. Mmm, it's so juicy. <laughs> My God, <clears throat> the tartness, the sourness from the leaves bites into like the fattiness of the meat and it just brings out so much more flavor. Wow. The seasoning is good too. It has this like spicy undertone. Okay. Let's try this one. This is the Deck Project one. This is going to be sweet, somewhat salty and sweet. 
it smells really good. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Mmm. Oh man. Perfectly cooked. <clears throat> Because this was cooked a little after without the flames and stuff. It's just like a very well-rounded, like like fully cooked, still all the juices in it. Mm, so many juices in here. There's a very light hint of sweetness. There's not a lot of sweetness actually, but just the right amount of savoriness and saltiness, the, the acidity from the leaves balances everything out so well. Mmm, turtle is so amazing. It is so good, so soft. All right, so between the two of these, I like the deck project more. Dano's is not bad. It's just, I feel like the application for this particular sort of meal, Dano's just doesn't fit with this sort of application. The deck project just tastes so much better in this specific like method of cooking. And I also think that the way that I cooked it wasn't very consistent also because at the start, the Danos was cooked under like some flame and a lot of smoke. And so like while I'm eating this, a lot of that flame and sort of like charbroil comes through and it's really good. But like the, the hint of spiciness uh, mixed with the garlic that I added, I don't feel like it fits for this. It's good, but it's not as great as um, the deck project one. So yeah, so yeah, for this particular project, deck project is better. <laughs> so yeah, it's so much juicier too. And I think it has to do with me cooking over the coals uh, with the deck project. And it's not as scorched and burnt, you know? See? It's just a mouthful of juices. It's not spicy, it's savory. There's a hint of sweetness, a hint of like saltiness. It's like a really nice balance. The garlic comes, comes through also, but because I cooked it over the coals, I think the garlic got cooked a little bit better. I think it got cooked all the way through, opposed to um, the Dano's one, the garlic is a little bit more prominent. It's a little stronger because I think what happened, the outside of the garlic got cooked very quickly and then inside of it is still the pungent sort of garlicky taste. It's not bad, but it is very different. And it's not as um, juicy. I swear, this is like the best thing ever. The whole, like this entire thing, like turtle is so good. All right, so that's pretty much it. Let's wash it down with some beer. The coals are still super hot over here. <laughs> I can probably go for another round of cooking. It is still incredibly hot. Very, very hot. That's amazing. <clears throat> All right, so I still have a bunch of turtle. Uh, I have a bunch of turtle meat still, like those nuggets. I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. It's been a lot of fun cooking this and eating the turtle. It's so good. And yeah, uh, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Smash that like button and uh, consider checking out some of my merch on my spread shop. And I'll see you next time. All right, peace out.